Hello and thanks for watching. Over the next few minutes, I'll be walking you through my real estate equity waterfall model with IRR and equity multiple hurdles. Now this model was originally released in early 2017. It's since gone through many iterations. And so this is an updated walkthrough video as of the end of 2019. And you can see the change log here on the version tab. Now let's start on the partnership returns tab. And here is where all of the inputs are entered as well as all of the calculations made. Now this is a module, so it's not a standalone model, meaning uh, property level cash flows have to be modeled separately. And then this module can be incorporated into that model to then take those property level cash flows, bring and flow them through this waterfall model to calculate contributions from and distributions to the partners. To get started, you'll start here at the top, blue font cells or input cells, black font cells or output cells. And we'll start with our first input, which is the promote structure method, whether it's IRR or equity multiple. And as you toggle through, it'll adjust the model accordingly. Let's stick with IRR. Next, we uh, uh, choose the equity contribution percentage between the general partner and the limited partner or limited partners. Uh, and, and that's simply by changing the general partner's equity contribution percentage. So for instance, we could toggle it to 10 and the limited partner's contribution percentage will automatically change. Once we've edited the contributions, we're going to build out our promote structure. And this is a four tier waterfall model. So your first tier preferred return plus return of capital. And then each subsequent tier uh, is a the, the promote tiers where the GP uh, earns a disproportionate share of the distributable cash in those tiers. So we start with uh, tier one. We simply select the distribution percentage to the GP, and that will then automatically calculate the distribution percentage to the LP. Uh, by default, it's set to be equal to uh, the GP's pro rata share of contributions or its ownership share in the venture. Uh, if you toggle it, say, to 0% in this first tier, what will happen is the LP will receive 100% of the cash flow until it receives a full return of capital and has earned its preferred return, in this case, on an IRR basis. And then there's the option that appears here whether the GP should then catch up to this 8%, right? this uh, uh, preferred return rate. So when it's toggled to yes, the GP catches up. If we toggle this to no, then the GP earns nothing in the first tier or is distributed nothing in the first tier and only receives distributions in the subsequent tiers. So, but for now, I'm gonna leave this as uh, peri pasu and pro rata based on equity contribution, or in this case, 10% to the GP, 90% to the LP in that first tier. Now, what is the uh, the hurdle rate, uh, the preferred return of that first tier? Well, that's entered here. So for instance, we have 8%, let's change this to 9%, and what you'll see is it reads tier one up to a 9% IRR, distributed 10% to the GP, 90% to the LP. And then there's some notes out here to, this, to the right that communicate what the model is doing. Now, once the LP has received a full return of capital and has earned its preferred return, again, on an IRR basis, in this case, 9%, any excess cash flow then flows in to the second tier. And that goes from, in this case, 9% to whatever uh, here cell D16 is. So let's change this, say, to 12.5%. So from nine to a 12 and a half, the GP earns some promote, all right? So 20% uh, in this case, which means there's a distribution percentage, 28% to the GP, 72% to the LP. Now, how is this distribution percentage calculated based on this promote? Well, what this is saying is if any cash flow that's available in the second tier 20% of it immediately goes to the GP. And then there's 80%, the 80% remaining is split pro rata based on each partner's share of that cash flow. 
And in here, the, the GP owns 10% of that cash flow, the LP owns 90%, and so the GP's distribution percentage is 20% plus 10% of the remaining 80%, or 28%, 72% to the LP. The third tier, same way, right? We change this, uh, let's keep that at 15. So from a 12 and a half to a 15, the GP earns 30% promote, that comes out to a 37% distribution percentage, 63% to the LP. And then any excess cash flow available above that, or in this case, above a 15%, the GP is promote, uh, earns a promote, in this case, of 40%. So the distribution percentage being 46, 54. So there we've, we've built out our promote structure. Next, we come down and we need to drop in now our cash flows. And this is what comes over from uh, your property level DCF. So you're going to have your net property level cash flow line, right? That's, that's your equity cash flow before tax, but after debt service. So that's going to include your investment cash flows, right? Those acquisition costs or development costs that will include your operating, your net operating cash flows. So that would be your cash flow after financing. And that will include your reversion cash flows, right? So what you, you sell the property for at the end of the analysis period or what the property's worth at the end, end, end of the analysis period minus any debt. The sum of that, that net property level cash flow line is linked to this row. And negative cash flows in this row then are contributions, right? Uh, positive cash flows become distributions to the partners. And then you have the option here of modeling in some uh, GP or sponsor fees. So for instance, we have asset management fees and this is paying out some asset management fee in each period. Uh, here, by default, there's even an asset management fee in year zero, which uh, really shouldn't be, so I'll zero that out. Uh, we have some acquisition fee in time zero, and then we have some disposition fee at the end of the analysis period. And what effectively happens is this property level cash flow line comes over and then the GP is dis immediately distributed whatever fees are owed to the GP. And then what's remaining here, we call the adjusted levered before tax cash flow line. And that is the amount that's distributed to the partners based on the contribution assumptions and the distribution assumptions above. And so once you've you've entered, uh, you've changed every one of these blue font cells to represent your deal. Down below here, the model is going to model out each of your tiers, contributions from and distributions to each of the partners. And then it is summarized in this section here. And you can see your LP distributions, LP contributions, the net profit from uh, or to the LP, LP's IRR, LP's equity multiple, and then the same for the GP other, except that the GP's fees are also broken out. So you can see what proportion of the GP's total distributions come from fees. So that's my real estate equity waterfall model with IRR and equity multiple hurdles. Please let me know if you have any questions. Uh, otherwise, thanks for your time.